Okay, actually, so thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm Paul, and um, let's see, I am an AI researcher. So uh, one okay. of the things that I study a lot is uh, natural language processing, uh, how computers can understand uh, human speech, right? So because nowadays, for instance, on social media, uh, there's so much information that human beings can't keep track of everything. So we need robots basically to read the internet and detect, you know, whether it's fake news or spam or, you know, cybersecurity threats and those sorts of things, or just to sell stuff, right? That's okay. also a place um, natural language processing is used. So that's what I study uh, most of the time. Uh, I went to Opoku Wari School, uh, as you may know. And from there, I proceeded yeah. to uh, Swarthmore College in the United States. So I took the SAT. So I went to Swarthmore. I did economics mm -hmm. there uh, and engineering. Uh, and then I continued to do my PhD at MIT, where I studied, you know, more algorithms and optimization and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. How is that? I don't want to keep yeah. rambling. I can definitely keep rambling. That was very good. That... Yeah. yeah. So you're a researcher now. Um, are you also a lecturer or a professor at MIT? No, actually, no. So after I did my uh, PhD, I spent a year as a postdoctoral researcher at MIT. And okay. actually, what I was doing was I was spinning out my uh, dissertation work into a startup. So it wasn't, uh, uh, at some point during my PhD, I decided I didn't want to be in academia, but I wanted to do entrepreneurship. So I wanted to do the research more in the industry. And okay. so uh, that's how that happened. So, but I spent some time as a postdoc and came to the industry afterwards. So now I work at, the, um, so I have a startup that does some work uh, in a related space. I work okay. as a director of uh, data science with a company called Dan and Bradstreet. And okay. They uh, actually NLP. I do NLP for them. So uh, they do uh, business intelligence. They use you know this kind of algorithms for investigating, for instance, who wants to buy your products, finding the people who want to buy your products that you're selling. Okay. Sounds very. Interesting. Uh, it's not like a fun day job. Paul? Could you say that again? I was saying that it sounds very interesting, like something you do on a fun day. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, it's very interesting stuff. Okay. So um, let's, let's cut to the chase and just... Uh, Talk a little about your time at the NSMQ. Do um, you have any fond memories from your com your championship that year? Do you have any particular highlights you want to share with us? Um, <laughs> where do I start? <laughs> um, so, I mean, the, the the whole competition was full of you know wonderful memories and big moments. Uh, I think, so for instance, as an example, the contest with Wesley Girls, which was decided by about three points, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this was during the second stage. Uh, I think it was a true or false question that separated us. So, it, I mean, it was very competitive, very thin margins, you know? Um, and of course, when you come out of something like that at the right side of it, it sticks with you, right? Um, yeah. Our contest with Presec, I saw you guys posted that one. Yes, yes, we posted that one. Of course, of course, of course Presec is always the school to beat, right? If you, you know, they, they do very well. They're always in the, you know, later stages of the competition. So anyone meeting them is going to, hear things like, okay, if you beat Presec, right, then it's your, it's your trophy, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, 
That definitely was. Again, that was another close competition. I think it was two riddles that separated us. We were tied most of yeah. the way till the end, well, you know? The last round, we really decided the competition. Yes. So that's, that again, that, that sticks. And of course, the final one. <laughs> Uh, where you actually get to lift the thing, yeah. I mean, obviously. And again, this is this is another. This was Peters. Uh, the final, I think, we had with St. Peters. And at the opposing, at the opposition team, uh, uh -huh. there was a guy called Apirias. Okay. Who I went. I went to JSS with him. Oh. And we we represented our JSS in. The Kitty Quiz, which is the JSS version of the National Science and Math Quiz. At the time, I don't think it happens anymore. There might be some versions of it. Uh, but yeah, we represented our school together in JSS. So it was, Ooh. you know, it felt like, Just you know, a big moment there. to meet in the final, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, and we were losing, actually, in the final round. We were losing until the riddles. So... Oh. I mean, the, the whole competition, where, where do I start, right? <laughs> I can keep the whole, I mean, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience in so many different ways. And if there, if there are very specific questions from audience, I can answer. Yeah. Sure we can keep minding this for hours. <laughs> okay, that, that's true. Um, I mean, the only question I've seen so far that's... Um... People wanted to know what you were doing, and we've already talked about that. Um, somebody was asking if you were married, but I was saving that question for later in the in the live to keep the, keep the suspense okay. going. All right. Yeah. So I think the last question here for life after the end. Thank you. Do you remember any particular things that your team um, did to celebrate? Um, do you remember any of the celebrations? What were some of the things you guys did when you won? Um, well, the school, actually, I, I like to say it was anticlimactic in some, in some ways mm. because right, right afterwards, you know, the, the competition happens when everybody's at home. At least during our time. I don't know. I think it still happens that way. Yeah. So everybody's at home. Uh, there were people in Accra who helped us celebrate right afterwards, but then they went home. Right? <laughs> and so yeah. I, I, I remember Joma, who, our teacher, who handled the OAS squad for many years. He actually didn't want us to do Jama. <laughs> oh, right. He was like, yeah, when the bus, he was like, don't do Jama. Until we get to Kumasi, don't do Jama, please. <laughs> uh, and so when we got to Kumasi, He's like, you can do Jama now. And we were like, ah, mm. we don't feel like it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Right? So in that sense, it was a little anticlimactic. But after, you know, we got, home, we got to the school and then we had the, the, our uh, anniversary celebration. Right? That's when, mm. you know, like they took us out and, you know, they gave us nice food, you know, in, in uh, boarding school. Good food is kind of short supply. At least it used to be that way. Uh, yeah. So those were, those were, that was very meaningful for us. I mean, we didn't... Um, I think nowadays there's a lot more, like there's prize money, right, in the trips to foreign countries yeah, and yeah. stuff, which is very cool. I'm very happy. I think that's a very positive step. Um, we didn't have that. Yeah, it was like they gave us some money. They gave the school some money and said congratulations. But that's not why we did it, right? We, we did it for exactly what we got out of it, which is, you know, the preparation, during the preparation for the contest, mm -hmm. you learn so much, right? You teach yourself how to take exams, basically. That's the way I view it. So a lot of my success afterwards, I would say I can attribute to having trained myself to solve problems under pressure, right? The logic yeah. and the calculations and stuff. The stuff, you know, you, in college, for instance, all the exams are kind of like that, or most of them. If you are doing the GREs, it's useful. Even, even like generic interviews for jobs, right? You, some things yeah. like that. So it will help you. You know, it will help you 
we much later. Um, and so, so I'm, every day I'm still celebrating my victory because <laughs> it got me, in many ways, it got me to where I am today. So, you know, That's I'm really still celebrating. <laughs> okay. um, one fan wanted to know if you still follow the quiz and which teams have impressed you in recent times. Um, I follow the competition all the time, of course. Um, and it has become actually very easy. It was harder when it wasn't live streamed online, but now it's live streamed. Yeah. That's, there's no reason not to watch it, right? Um, so I follow, I follow very closely. And I, I will say that all the, I mean, all the winners in the recent years have been very impressive. I mean, Augustine's, uh, very impressive. Yeah. Prempa College, very impressive. I mean, kudos, kudos to all those uh, wonderful contestants. Not not just the winners. Um, yeah. I mean, I again, like, like people people in social media like to compare people to each other. You know, the greatest, what what. Uh, and I don't, I don't, I try to um, avoid that because I mean, a lot of the contestants are incredible. You know, and uh, <clears throat> and the way sometimes matches are decided, like right, you need a little bit of luck to shine in yeah. your way. You know, um, so I, I've been impressed. And I'm continually impressed by all the. I mean, the winners, and not without exception. Without exception, I wouldn't. I don't know how I would do today in the particular format <laughs> that has yeah. the quiz has adopted. You know, so I don't. I don't really compare myself, or I like to be compared for that matter. I just, uh, but I'm really um, impressed by the standard of the show recently. Uh, very, very, very much so. Uh, I probably shouldn't say much more because, you know, the rivalries <laughs> online yeah. fights will start, you know, Prempe boys will start fighting our white boys. And, <laughs> you know, okay. <laughs> and uh, the preset guys will come out, of course, you know. <laughs> it's a real thing. Yeah. Um, so, the next question here was on your education after what? Um, you got degrees from Swarthmore and MIT. Do you, do you want to maybe right. talk about that a little? Okay. Um, so uh, Swarthmore College studied engineering and economics. So Swarthmore okay. is a liberal arts college. It allows you to like craft, you can even allow you to craft, uh, you know, your own major if you want. But what I did was more kind of standard. It's, it's harder to do two degrees at non-liberal non, non arts colleges, but okay. in my college, that was, it's pretty standard for people to do that because it affords the freedom. Uh, I wanted to do economics because I thought I might at some point end up in entrepreneurship, right, business. Okay. So I thought it would be good to understand, even though Economics isn't the way it's taught in undergrad. It's not really uh, entrepreneurship economics. It's more like the theory of, you know, how the market works. But it's, it's fundamental, and I think it has helped me a lot. Um, but, of course, I always wanted to be an engineer, and so that's, that was the main thing for me. And so I was particularly interested, you know, in algorithms and mathematics. Just from childhood, I had a... I felt uh, an affinity for that. My dad wanted me to do medicine. Um, I, it's just not where my heart was. So I went yeah. with more uh, the mathematics yeah. algorithms kind of route. And uh, so I went to MIT afterwards for my master's. Uh, okay. I studied, uh, for, so for my master's, I did a lot of teaching, which was very useful experience. Uh, and I also studied uh, systems biology. Okay. Which is just a fancy way of saying systems biology. It's just yeah. a fancy way of saying um, it, it was math, basically. So how do you how do you uh, describe what happens in a cell at a very small volume? So people watching might have heard. 
definitely know probably mass action kinetics, right? Those equations for how the reactions happen. Uh, they don't work. They, they work very well for approximately at large volumes, which is what we care about in high school or GSS. But if you start looking at the cell, it's a very small volume. You can't use those equations anymore. You can't use the model anymore. So you have to think about, you know, where did the model come from? Which assumptions did I make to arrive at the model? And how can I relax them? So yeah. to describe what happens inside the cell, uh, like DNA, RNA, those kind of, at that scale okay. of volume. Uh, so so that, that was my master's. I did that. The publication is out there for anyone who's interested. If you just look for my uh, azunra.com, I have my publications linked there. Yeah. Um, my uh, PhD was on optimization. Okay. So um, optimization just means question? you're trying to find like maybe the maximum or the minimum of some very important quantity, right? So maybe uh, the problem I worked on was a reflection from a solar panel because I think it's important. Okay. It's important to yeah. us. We have a lot of sun. I wanted to know whether I can contribute something to uh, improving the efficiency of that or like understanding how it works. Uh, so what happens during when you, when the sun moves across the sky, right? Depending on where the sun is, yeah, uh, it's going to reflect some of the light that falls on it, the solar panel. And of course, that's yeah. a loss. Uh, it's an inefficiency that you want to eliminate. And so the problem was, how do you minimize that reflection? Yeah. Uh, and, and that the reflection comes, there's a model for it, right? So you have a model you can code in the computer that will predict the reflection from the panel when you change various things inside your, pan in your panel, like how thick are some of the layers, are, which materials you use. So the optimization a combination of parameters to minimize the reflection. Okay. That was my, like my dissertation work. <laughs> and to do that, we had to come up, well, we, we developed an algorithm of a specific kind. The problem with many algorithms is they, they, they get stuck in local minima, so they may find a solution that's good, but not the best one, All right? So you may find something here, but there's something here, just because the surface is very rough. So we just found a way of uh, doing, always finding the minimum of that reflection curve. So that's roughly what I, you know, worked on for about five years. Okay. You know, you give <laughs> five years, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, the next question, the fans wanted to know if you are still in touch with some people from your NSMQ days and how often do you guys connect? Oh, all the time. All the time. I mean, Aubrey is uh, in Baltimore at John Hopkins okay. Affiliated. Um, whenever we can, of course, he's very busy. I'm very busy, right? So whenever I'm there, I always see him. Uh, Vincent, whenever whenever um, we are in the same city, I mean, we definitely see each other. So it does, sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, it takes a few years before between meetings. Unfortunately, yeah. because life takes people in different directions, you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't expect to ever stop seeing them and meeting with them, and not just Vincent and Aubrey. I mean, everybody else. Yao, <laughs> DC4, anybody? Are there any, uh, any of us boys on the call know DC4 probably? You know, we use okay. numbers to describe ourselves. I'm BC103, yeah. DC4, okay. a boy 4, anytime, yeah. Anytime in Accra, I see that guy. You know, so, I mean, we keep, we keep in touch. Okay, that's, that's, that's nice to hear. Um, the next question is, someone wants to know the kind of work you're doing in Ghana or if you'll be doing any work in Ghana, any projects that are being executed here. Thank you for asking that very important question. Uh, there, there are a few initiatives I'm working on. 
So probably the flagship one is the uh, Ghana Natural Language Processing. Uh -huh. It's an open source, open source initiative that I co-founded uh, Stephen Moore at uh, University of Cape Coast. Okay. And uh, Dan Baba from Harvard. So it, 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 it relates to this language technology, so computer understanding human language. We do not have, so for instance, we don't have Google Translate. There's no tree version, version of it for some reason. So you can, you can translate English to Russian very easily on yeah. Google or even uh, Swahili. So the Southern African languages are in it, but there's not, none for tree, even for a lot of the ones in Nigeria, which is such a huge market. I don't understand it. Uh, but there's no Google Translate. And of course, the reason is because of, you know, data, the yeah. availability of data and stuff. Uh, so we are working on that problem. So, and it's open source. So we are, uh, we have uh, over 50 members. I, I even lost track. I get like five or six requests to join the group a day. Uh, okay. it's, it's growing very fast. A lot of very smart kids taking part, participating, contributing. We are trying to teach them, um, like all these technologies, like GitHub, you know, TensorFlow, you know, neural networks, you know, uh, Microsoft uh, supports us with, um, Microsoft supports us with free cloud computing, which we allow the kids to use so that they can pick up those skills. Um, and hopefully within a few months, we are going to release some, um, a bunch of papers and techno like software that you can use if you're an entrepreneur you can use that stuff whether you need to build some app for the smartphone to understand how a person who doesn't speak english maybe in all the various languages we have like frafra and frafra so frafra language to english translator so that you know people providing services can go to those areas and communicate with those people easier right or yeah. those people can start using the internet more because most of it is in english right or we can be begin to understand security threats you know when people are mm -hmm. having conversations in different languages we can begin to understand them so that's ghana natural language processing um if anyone's interested in that please join us uh, okay that's one initiative my uh -huh. startup has uh, has a branch in Ghana. And we, we are trying to do some of this social media um, social media analysis problems, you know, uh -huh. for uh, various applications. So, for instance, you can have you, even even for COVID, um, we haven't yet demonstrated this, you know, fully. But for COVID, even for COVID, right? If you are looking at if you are looking at what people are tweeting about and uh -huh. suddenly in a certain area of the country, you see people tweeting about the symptoms associated with COVID, then that might be a sign that there's an outbreak going on there. Right. So this is yeah. just an example of a way that you can use artificial intelligence for healthcare applications. Right? Um, there are lots of, lots of potential things. My brother built a, he built a knapsack sprayer. It's like a hardware uh -huh. device. This is no software. Hardware. So you can wear it and you walk around and it sprays stuff, right? So you can use that for, you can use that, you know, to clean or you can use that to spray disinfectants in markets. You know, like these are just some examples. Um, we work on a lot of projects. Not everything works out, you know. Sometimes yeah, you yeah. develop the technology, but there's no money to invest to build the technology, right? And so it sits there. You know, you try a few different things, eventually something lands, right? And hopefully yeah. in the process, in the process you do useful things, you train some people, you know, mm -hmm. and that's the journey. If you enjoy what you do, right? <laughs> yeah. Definitely if you enjoy what you're doing. Yeah, um, the next question here, is on your other projects, so specifically Dr. Pushkin. 
Um, people want to know oh. about your your musical career and how you're balancing that with your entrepreneurship and like academic work. Um, people just want to know more about Dr. Pushkin and what inspired Dr. Pushkin. Okay. So, um, I'm, I am, uh, do you know who Pushkin is, the historical figure? Mm, you would have to tell me about that a little. I have to expound, okay. So, yeah. so Pushkin is considered to be uh, the greatest Russian poet. That's pretty, mm -hmm. like if you talk to people, everybody pretty much agrees that that's the, in the history of Russian literature, which is, I mean, one of the most prominent, if not the prominent in the world, Pushkin is considered to be the greatest poet. Now, what some people might not know about Pushkin is that Pushkin was actually part Africa. Okay. Um, so, so Pushkin was uh, a descendant of, you know, some a descendant of some slave from some other country that got anyway some story there and then you know in russia he became free okay he was a slave and his descendants basically one of them was pushkin and no, that makes uh, sense. my mother is russian so when i and i spent part of my childhood in russia so okay. when i was uh, when I was a child, actually, like in grade three, four, science, I was good in science, and I liked science always and math. But what stood out to my teachers was my writing. Uh -huh. uh, so naturally, because I'm also, you know, African, they would say, oh, is this Pushkin? Pushkin, <laughs> Pushkin returns, right? Well, so maybe it was like a I funny see. thing. Or like yeah. A name, uh, but but I, was, I was good at it. I remember seriously thinking about becoming an author of poetry and prose and like being okay. basically the next Pushkin. Um, but then I, I moved to Ghana and I, I lost my proficiency with the Russian language. Oh. I don't have the same kind of proficiency anymore. Uh, but of course, I, ha I had to find a way to express myself, you know, like that aspect of me didn't didn't go away, right? And so I started doing it in English because, and just hip hip hop um, kind of naturally, I don't know, it worked for me. I like music. My, my yeah. brother musically is very talented, always making up melodies, you know. Yeah. I have, I think some, you know, skills in that domain too. So it just naturally evolved. It was a nice way to express myself, continue this artistic, journey if you like and since then i mean i just kept doing it i know i know like people say like to think that art and science are two different things but i, I don't really subscribe to that and yeah. and actually in my in my art i try to demonstrate that that's not true so if you for anyone who's listened to any or seen any of the recent releases that uh, i've put out one of them was um, questions, was the first one. And question, the questions video was actually made using a, a novel application of artificial intelligence. Okay. Right. So uh -huh. uh, basically, they call it style transfer. All you're doing is you're trying to animate or create animations using like a artificial intelligence. So the way people created animations a long time ago is they they drew it frame by frame right mm -hmm. maybe by looking at a model or something so basically yeah. you teach a neural network to look at an image and create a drawing and you do it for every frame of the video and you do it in various styles that are visually appealing so yeah. you can train a neural network to draw like van gogh or you can train a neural network to draw like some you know at a Da Vinci, right? And then yeah. see what they come up with, right? Uh, and, and this is, that video is basically what my system came up with. And I uh -huh. mean, people look at it and they, they like, they like what they see, you know, and they get into 
so for some people it will be much more than what I'm saying in the song, which I hope eventually they hear what I'm saying in the song, which is yeah. so it's just a medium to get the message heard, which the message is usually something about, you know, our society, you know. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. you know, I try to be uplifting, you know. Sometimes of course mm -hmm. I have fun, you know, we have fun songs, we have songs for, you know, we have laugh songs, we have some Afrobeats. We've done okay. some Afrobeats. We actually recently did um, a single with Suribia, who, is, who just won the three music awards. Oh. Uh, yes. He, so he, he raps in Frafra. His claim to fame is he's at, like the Frafra's accord, basically. Oh, that's nice. Um, there's not as many Frafras as, you know, Sakodia's people, so it's not, yeah, he's definitely not as big as Sakodia, but to us, he's Sakodia, right? Yeah. He's, he holds our, you know, our language up, yeah. and he performs in that language, and it's very impressive. He's on my song, you know, and that, to me, that's like, whoa, you know? <laughs> um, so that, yeah, we have some Afrobeats, we have Afrobeats collaborations with some very uh, talented Zimbabwean artist, for instance. Um, okay. So I encourage you to check it out. If you go to uh, any of my, if you go to my website, you can, it's all linked there. So I hope okay. you can check it out. Let me know what you think. Yeah. So um, all the work you've done is listed on www.azunre.com. Yes. Okay, yep. cool. So people can um, check that out after the live and just like follow you and get to know more about your work and those who want to stay in touch can just reach out to you from there. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so um, we are almost at the end of the live session. Um, the last few questions are just about your future plans if you have any that you can share with us. And, yeah. Um, future plans. Uh, well, I think we've kind of have been talking about them. <laughs> so all the, all the things I'm doing mm -hmm. now, I hope to continue doing to a, a great extent. So I, I mentioned mm -hmm. the Ghana Natural Language Processing Project. There's not, that problem will never be solved fully you know we can only keep pushing keep pushing the you know the states of that knowledge forward and keep getting it better and better right so i hope to keep doing that i think it's going to become more important as we begin to adopt you know digital digitally more and more it's going to become more and more important so uh, that will likely continue for a while uh, the work uh, i'm doing with some of the agricultural projects i mentioned i hope we can elevate that to another level. Um, I'm writing a book now. Uh, okay. Called, uh, Transfer Learning and Natural Language Processing. And the reason I picked that uh, subject is because it's actually related to all of these things we are talking about. So mm -hmm. Transfer uh -huh. Learning just enables you to, it enables you to learn or, or train computers a lot faster with less data and less computing resources. This is important to us because, you know, like to achieve some of the things that Google is doing or Facebook is doing, you need tens of thousands of GPUs in some instances, right? So naturally, mm -hmm. you can't have a kid somewhere in, you know, Cape Coast who is trying to solve a problem, doesn't have access to that. But if you are, if you are smart about how you do your training and if you reuse the knowledge instead of trying to gain your knowledge all the way from scratch, which is the way humans learn, you can actually achieve those things. So this is what the book is about. Um, I hope to contribute. This is not only important to us. It's something the whole world mm -hmm. is thinking about now uh, because we, we want to keep making the machine learning systems more efficient. So this is a very great way to do that. Um, so I'll continue, right? I mean, I, I think it's in about three months is the book will be done. You can already get the early chapters available. Okay. Um, after I finish that, who knows? They might, I don't know what will happen after that. You know, hopefully, you know, hopefully it evolves into 
some of these projects and merges with some of these projects and helps the knowledge helps uh, some of these projects I'm working on because they're all related. Um, yeah, and I mean, I, I consider myself lucky to work on such interesting things. If someone told me mm -hmm. this was my job when I was starting out, I would have said, where do I sign? Like, so yeah. <laughs> I hope to continue doing this for as long as I can. Yeah. That sounds great. Um, last question before we go. Um, one of our fans wanted to know what keeps you motivated um, since during your NSMQ time, what kept you going? Even after that, what has kept you going through all these years? Um, what has kept me going? It's a good question. Um, I, the way uh, I think I, I convinced myself long ago that there's no other option let's say that oh. and that's probably okay. probably a mind trick i played on myself because it was true um i don't know i don't know what i would do what, what else what else am i gonna do with my time um i really enjoy what i work on you know and it's very important i think it's very important probably the most important thing is to pick uh, pick uh, something to work on that you really truly enjoy and if you do that it's not going to be a difficult question to answer right you won't you're not going to have mm -hmm. to push yourself all day i mean sometimes you're going to have to for sure but it will be a lot easier let's just put it that way if you enjoy what you do and i think i've been lucky I guess maybe pri even privileged uh, to find these things. I think a lot of the time you have to go out there and yeah. find them. And really, like, you know, like that's what your education should be about is try a few different things. You know, try. And the thing that really drives you, your, you know, your heart is what you should stick with. And then these questions answer themselves, right? Yeah. Okay. Did I answer all um, there, there was a you, you did. It's it's the question was about what kept you going and you talked about how you basically told yourself this was the only way. So it kept you motivated because it was the only path you thought you had to take and I'm sure that helped focus your decisions and at every step you knew that this was the right thing to do. So yeah. It's very yeah. inspiring. So um, I think the last thing from you would be a message to the current NSMQ um, competitors, the schools, the students preparing for the NSMQ this year, and a message to our NSMQ fandom in general. Okay. Um, I think, uh, I, think I, I honestly believe that NSMQ is probably the most impactful, it might be the most impactful thing on Ghana television. Okay. The thing that, based on my peers and everybody I know, and um, just how much it has impacted the lives of people in terms of, you know, people who have gone through the process and made themselves go through the process and all the skills they picked up and all of the ways those skills help them through their careers, as I have described for me, uh, I think that that impact is very important. And I think it's very, it's very rare for something like this. Like I've been to other countries and I haven't seen, I think we have something very special. That's what yeah. I'm saying. And if you are, if you are, you know, participating in the program, you, you should, you probably do, I hope, and I think a lot of people do, but I'll say it anyway. You probably understand this and you understand how important it is. Please do everything you can to support the program because it's not always, you shouldn't be taken as granted that it will continue. There were years mm -hmm. when it didn't happen because there was no sponsorship, right? Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, education doesn't get the same attention as maybe some other parts of life which they should. 
I hope to do everything I can to change that. Um, everybody here can do something yeah. to change that. And of course, one of the things you can do is, you know, take, take this seriously, learn as much as you can, be nice to each other, very important, because yeah. life doesn't end after the contest, right? You're going to go maybe start a company with one of these competitors, right? Yeah. One, right? Or they might help you or give you a nice opportunity, right? So be nice to each other. Um, support the program, learn what you can, play fair. And I mean, this is, you know, understand that this is something very special. Um, and I hope, I hope to see you okay. at the next show. And I'll be watching you. So put on your best. <laughs> yeah. Um, last request from our fans before we go. They want, they want either of two things. Either you do the Imanus. Or you do you give us a freestyle from Dr. Pushkin? <laughs> wow. Um, is that, okay. So freestyle, freestyle. So you know, a lot of rappers lie. You know, they rap, they rap something they wrote, and they say it was a freestyle, right? Um, yeah. So this is this won't be a freestyle as long as that's acceptable. It will be a written verse. Okay. 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 Yeah. So let's see. This one is called Another Day, and I wrote it actually during my when I was writing my dissertation, and it actually falls into all the themes we've been discussing. So it's pretty good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Another day to give. Another one to take, another day to make another mistake. The mistakes that I make often keep me awake, keeping opinions opaque just for my own sake. Feeling myself swim to the other side of the mainstream, feeling dreams get darker. I don't scream, they scream back, then attack, twist the facts. My mind is slapped with a bad luck. The key does not exist, a twist. On the inside, where sanity slides and hides behind every creation of mine. My obstacle, lack of time, still find the time to rhyme, remind myself to keep dreaming, keep trying to climb, don't have much time. Time is sublime, but soon or very soon, the time will be mine, the time to shine. Not today, not yesterday, some other day, one of many. Tomorrow, very near, beckoning me to share, experience yesterday, then another day, say what you may say, I'll say what I need to say, I'll play the way that I play, do it my way. You know, the time well, scale is fragile, ironically, it's temporal, it's impermanence and transience, makes sense, maybe, here for a reason. Maybe there is no meaning, no end to this demeaning, self-destructive careening. <laughs> Seeing the truth with my eyes, I see this guy's in here lies, then see the truth and despise it, because being true is not wise. Watching wow. the sunrise above the troubled skies, I realize the truth lies, defies, denies, trying to rise. Real slow, but keeping it going with four, I don't know, but it is all I know. The day will end. Another day will come with another mission. This is my human condition. Wow. Wow. That's it. That's wow. It. wow. Wow. People okay. still want you to another do the day. Day. People still want you to do the humanist though before we go. What if they do it with me? Uh, I think I'll, I think I'll embarrass myself. <laughs> okay. Okay. So thank you very much I, for. I, I am on a cheer for life, though. Okay. Okay. So I I hope they you know. they accept that. <laughs> yeah. But thank you very much for joining the live session. Um, it's sad that we didn't get to ask all the questions we wanted to ask, but I'm sure. If we all visit um, Dr. Azure's website and use the contact forms there, we can get in touch with him directly for some of our more pressing questions. So, Facebook. Yeah. Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Twitter, all of them. I try to respond to all the uh, questions. If I don't respond okay. immediately, uh, it's just because there are a lot of them. So, but I'll yeah. try and get to it. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so thank you very much for joining from all of us at Prime Time and NSMQ. Thank you for inspiring our fans, inspiring the contestants for this year, and we hope that this is only 
another engagement with you and we'll be doing more things together in future. I definitely hope so. All right. Bye. Okay. Peace out. See you. All right.